Okie dokie, time for another build. Got a delivery the other day, so I can finally make some more Damascus. And the delivery is from the great and powerful Oz, or Bruno, New Jersey Steel Baron. Got some 1084 and some 14 or 14 and 20 because apparently they make that stuff. How about some 15 and 20? You didn't know I was doing an unboxing video, did you? Probably not the place to do it because they pack their crap with staples and wood, stuff like that. Almost have to hire a crew to come in to open this. <sighs> Got it. Almost there. Oh, look at this beautiful stuff. Oh, there we go. So I got six pieces of 15 and 20. Six pieces of 1084. They're all eighth inch thick one and a half wide and 48 long or 40 long, 42 long. I forget how they sell it. 48 long. Three, four, five, six, and then there's the 1084. So what I'm making is a set from some random pattern, low layer, random pattern Damascus. My low layer is usually about 30 layers. And sorry about the lawn mowing in the background. Again, I have neighbors. But anyway, I'm gonna cut up three of the 15 and 20. And three of the 1084. And I'm going to cut five inch lengths. And I am going to make one eight inch chef, a six inch Santoku, a three and a half inch paring knife, and a slicer like 10, 12 inches. I can't remember exactly how long, but this should definitely take care of it. So I'm gonna cut these up at five and three eighths of an inch. And that should use up the entire stick. And I think one of these days I'm going to buy a horizontal bandsaw because I think that'll make my life a little bit easier. But for now, just have to chop this up the old fashioned way with the good old angle grinder. Clamp it down. Mm. 
And then I'm sure there's better ways of doing this, but I just wrap each section with some tape, any kind of tape really. Then I just draw one more line on the top so that I can keep these somewhat straight when I'm cutting them. And then I just need to go make a mess with the angle grinder. Now I just have to, to uh, figure out what's 15 and 20 and what's 1084. Normally I can tell what's what, but this stuff looks identical other than this one having 15 and 20 written on it. Don't worry, I'll figure it out. All right. That's how I know this dark one right in the middle. Those three are 1084. That one's 15 and 20. Okay. We got this. So the dark one separates it right there. 1084, 15 and 20. 1084, 15 and 20. If not, I'm going to have a messed up billet. 1084. Yep. 1084, 15 and 20. Yeah, normally this stuff, um, I guess I don't ever buy the eighth inch 15 and 20 because normally it's got shear marks on it. Like, uh, right here. I don't know if you can see that where it's kind of jogs back right here. This is 15 and 20 because it's been sheared and it's 16th inch. So. Yeah, I don't think I've ever bought eighth inch. The lesson learned. All right, got it all figured out. 1084, right here. 15 and 20, right here. Now, a lot of people say if it's cold rolled, you can just slap them together and they'll forge just fine. They'll, they'll forge weld just fine. I prefer to clean mine up either way. So I'm going to run these through a 120 grit on the grinder, get them all cleaned up.
All right. We've got some nice shiny 15 and 20 and some nice shiny 1084, I think. And I'm gonna make two billets. And one of the billets is just gonna be some random pattern, low layer, 30 layer. Then the other one I'm gonna stack up to try to do a mosaic billet. And I'm gonna do Mareko Malmasi's Paisley and see if I can not screw up the tiling this time. But anyway, let me split these in half or close to in half, split this in half. All right, I'm just gonna start slapping the layers in here. All right. There's that fella. Let's see if I can get these straightened out here. Get those nice and tight. It's time to weld this bugger up. I'm gonna clean off some of this weld just so when this gets uh, drawn out, I don't have to clean up quite as much. So this is gonna be the Paisley. So I'm just gonna write this on here. So I know that this is the one that I have to forge on a, on its points. I have to turn it and change the, change the bar shape, if that makes sense. If not, I'm sorry. I suck at explaining things. And then this one is the, it's gonna be my low layer. So the Paisley, I'm not even going to worry about anymore. I just wanted to get that prepped. This is going to be done after I get all the knives I need to make out of this one. So maybe I'll do a video later on the Paisley. I'm not entirely sure, but we're going to focus just on the low layer and the knife set in this video series. All right, we got the trusty kerosene over here. And, oh wow, I have a chainsaw chain that I put in there a long time ago because I was gonna try to forge weld that. Anyway, maybe another time. Anyway, this, this billet, just plop it in there so it can soak. I'm just gonna leave it overnight because I'm done for the day, but you don't need to leave it in there that long. Just a few minutes soak and then you'd be good to go. Been in here for about 
15, 20 minutes and it's looking pretty good. So it's time to do the initial forge weld. this thing forge welded together now so it's time to start drawing this out See, we're going to be here a while. almost done with this thing and I am glad because it's getting hot in here. It's very hot. This is where I'm going to end with this. This thing is one nice solid piece of steel. And the next step is just to start forging out the blades. So if I was going to sell a chunk of this or try to get exact dimensions, I'd put my kiss blocks in, I'd clean it up, all that good stuff. But I'm just forging it. So I find no purpose in, you know, making this a perfectly dimensioned piece of steel. So, done here. This will be the end of this video. Next video is um, forging, and I'll get the four blades that I have to make forged out. So, we're good here.